Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can set up your casting state for your character. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. In the series we are actually going to have a couple of spell casting abilities, things like healing, throwing projectiles and all of that good stuff, but it's no good just having the characters standing there idling, instead what we want them to do is to be able to cast that ability, have the hands go up in the air throw the projectile or do whatever they've got to do. So if I quickly press Z and show you this little sample ability that I've made here, you can see as I try to heal the character, what it's doing is putting his hand up in the air and it spawns an emitter and it looks really, really cool. So what I'm going to be showing you how to do is to create a state inside of our animation blueprint that we can go to if they are casting an ability. It's really simple and it's going to do a hell of a lot to our game and we've already got all the animations imported into the engine for it from our custom character setup. So, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly close this project that I've got and go straight back into the version that you guys have. Okay, so the engine is just loaded up and we can get started on setting up our casting state. So, first things first, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and dive into our blueprint character. Um, so open up your third person character and then inside of here we've actually got to create a variable to tell the engine whether or not the player is actually casting. Now, bear in mind we're actually going to be changing this to true or false when we create our abilities later on. Um, so for now, but anyway, just go ahead and create your variable. So press plus variable over here and make sure the variable type is set to boolean. And then for the name, if you just go ahead and set this to casting 1h for now. So the reason why I'm using casting 1h as opposed to just casting is because we're going to have different styles of animation. Now what I mean by that is one of them is going to be like two-handed, another is going to be one-handed, one's going to be for buffs, so there's going to be loads of different types, but for now I'm just going to set this one type which is just going to be casting 1h. So now that we've done that, go ahead and compile your blueprint character. And now inside of our animation blueprint, if we go ahead and open this up, we've got to go ahead and set up all the states now and make the magic happen. So before we create the states, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into my event graph real quick and I'm actually going to get the information from the third person character into our animation blueprint for casting so that we can actually use it later on. So the way that I'm going to do that is from my update animation, in our sequence node, you see how we've got send uh, then one, like I said we're going to be using this in the previous video, drag this out and we're going to create another sequence of blueprint events. So drag it out and then type in third person character and then from here our object wildcard is simply going to be get player character and then with this player character now as the side scroller character, sorry, as the third person character, we need to go ahead and get a reference to our casting. So get casting 1H, and then from this, so that we can actually use it now, go ahead and drag this out and promote it to a variable. And then just give this the name casting 1H, and then just drag this new set node that we've got to our casting third person character, and that's all good. So compile it and hopefully there's no errors, that's all good. And then the next thing that we need to do then is to go over to our states. So go into our states here, so press the little icon at the top over here and then go to our anim graph, open up our state machine and then inside of here we've now got to create our casting state. So drag from your idle and then just add a new state and call this casting 1h and then also drag from walk and running down to here as well. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because these arrows show where your states can go. So they can go from the idle to the casting state and they can also go from the walk and running state to the casting as well. Once the casting has actually finished, I also want them to be able to go back to those states. So I also need to drag these little arrows back to those original states that we've got. And I'm also going to drag this down a little bit here, just so that it looks a little bit cleaner for us. So, now that we've got a casting state, we actually need to hook up an animation to this. So open this up, and then inside of here, we're just going to be using the one-handed animation for now. So grab your standing 1H cast spell, and then simply just drag that into the end result and then hit compile. And that is pretty much everything for our casting. We're not going to be able to see it running at the moment because we haven't actually changed the variable to true yet. 
Now, one other thing you will see is down at the bottom here in our compiler results, you can see we haven't set up anything for can enter transition yet. So basically what that's saying is it doesn't know when to transition from the state, so we need to hook up our newly created casting one h variable into that. So what we've got to do is go back into our states, and then from here, if you remember we've got these little transitional rules over here, we just need to hook those up. So starting off with idle to casting, double click that to open it up, what we're going to do is simply check to see whether or not our casting 1h is true. And the way we're going to do that is by simply type in equal, and then it's a boolean that we're looking for. So drop that in there, equal boolean, get a reference to our casting 1h for the top one. And then if we just go ahead and check this second box, what this is going to do is return true if casting 1h is set to true, which we'll be doing in our third person character later on. What I'm going to do now is actually copy this because we need to do the same thing to go from walk running to casting as well. So press Ctrl C to copy with both of those selected and then go into walk and running, sorry, and then go into our transitional rule from walk and running to casting, open it up and then press Ctrl V to paste it in here. Now if you don't want to copy and paste for whatever reason, you can always just create these little nodes again and that's all good. If we compile now, you can see two of those have gone. And now we just need to set up the rule for going back, and it's pretty much just the opposite of this. So once again, with this still copied onto my clipboard, I'm going to go into my states and I'm going to get the other one. So going back to walk and running, double click to open it up, control V to paste these in, and then just hook this up just like that, and make sure this time you uncheck the little boolean here so it returns false and it just moves the character back, that's all good. Control C to copy that, go back into my states, and one last time, going back to our idle is just dropping this in as simple as that. So if we compile now, all of our errors have gone and hopefully we should be able to test this out. And I'm just going to do a quick test right now and that's just by key binding the Z key on my keyboard to switch us into the casting state. We're going to be adding a lot more into it like effects and sounds and you know obviously abilities as well like healing or throwing projectiles. But for now it's just a quick test to make sure that our key binding and our state is working fine. So open up your third person character and then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to type in the, I'm just going to press the Z key, scroll all the way up, and we should find one underneath keyboard events for Z. If we have this now, we've got our pressed event, and then if we drag this out, what I'm going to do is simply set casting 1H to true. So set casting 1H, and as soon as we cast this, and set it, sorry, as soon as we set this and set it to true, it's actually going to start playing the animation. Now, after a little while, we want it to go back, so I'm going to run a quick little delay here. And then after the delay, I'm going to simply set this to untrue. So I'm going to copy and paste this, uncheck it, and that's all good. The animation takes about two seconds, so I'm going to set my delay duration to two. Hit compile now. And then hopefully, in a moment, when we press the Z key, our hand will go up in the air. So press the Z key hand goes up in the air and it goes back down to normal and our player can keep on running and we can do it again. Now bear in mind if we use this while we're running it bugs out a little bit it's because it's a standing animation we are going to be stopping the character movement when they are actually you know using this ability but that is something for the next video when we actually add the implementation of you know the functionality so for healing and all of that good stuff. Now there is one other thing that I do want to quickly do before I do end the video and that is I want to go into the blend space real quick and I want to change one thing inside of there to make things a little bit smoother. So open up your blend space for your Eve character and then all I'm going to do is just fix that little fade between the idle and the walk and running. There's a little bit of snapping and the same goes for the casting as well. Just set your interpolation time to 1 on both of these for both direction and speed. And then if we go ahead and save these, press play now. And if we walk forwards, you can see it's a lot smoother than it was before. You'll know what I'm talking about. When I press Z, nice and smooth going from one animation to another that is perfect and that is exactly how i want it once again guys thanks for watching stay awesome keep creating your boy vertus signing out this series was made possible by you guys supporting me on patreon if you want to help create other series like this then check out my patreon page in the link in the description